In this video, we're going to take a look at importing various vector formats into Carveco Maker, which have come from third party software. There are a couple of ways to do this. The first way is to go to the vector drop down and then select import. And this will open up a dialog box. Now, if you take a look down the bottom right hand side and click the drop down, you will see all of the supported file types that can be imported. And these are all vector file types. Now, I would say that the top two are probably the most widely used. So you've got your AI, EPS, PDF and DXF drawings. So those are the ones that I'm going to focus on. So if you just leave it on all supported files, it will just show up in the window, whatever files are supported. So if I select this file that I have here, which is a DXF file and select open. Now this has been created in millimeters, this file, and I've created my model in millimeters. The model is 800 by 800 square. Now it tells me on this dialog box that the width of these vectors that I'm trying to import are over 15,000 and the height is over 13,000. So this is actually going to be too large for this model, but I'm not too worried about that. I'll show you how you can sort that out. You also have an option to center in the model and you also have a really useful option, which is automatically rejoin the vectors. So sometimes if you're importing, let's say from AutoCAD, what this will do is each line will be a separate vector. And what you would normally have to do is go around and join all of these vectors up in order to machine them. When you're importing, it automatically does this for you. So it saves a very time consuming process. And it also gives you a tolerance so you can rejoin those. Now you can choose whether the drawing was created in millimeters or inches. I know that this was created in millimeters. So I'll select okay. And that's centered this drawing in the model. Now, as you can see, this is absolutely huge. So if I zoom out, you can see that it's a really, really large DXF file and a really large model. If I deselect it, you can also see that it's all black. So what's happened here, if I click on the drop down for the vectors, is it's imported this DXF file on one layer, which is called all bed sizes. Now this can also be a little bit of a pain because let's say that I just wanted to machine a few of the drill holes that I have in there. I would have to go around and delete all the bits that I didn't want or select all of the drill bits that I wanted. On that dialog box, there was actually another option which would preserve the layers because I know that these have been created on all separate layers when they were done in AutoCAD. So if I delete all of these and then go to the vector drop down again, select import, select all bed sizes, and you can see I've got a destination here. By default, this is set to a new layer. So this is what it's done here. It's created a new layer, which is the file name. I could have selected current layer, so it would just put all of that on the default layer, or I can preserve the layers. So it will come in with exactly the same layers. So if I open that and then select OK, and now deselect it, you can see that they're all different colors. The reason being is that it's imported all of the different layers as well. So let's say the dimensions, I'll just delete this all bed sizes first of all, because I don't need it. Let's say the dimensions, I don't need those. So what I can do is just turn them off. The profile, I don't need that for the moment. So I could turn that off and it would just leave me with all of the drill holes. Now, if I right click on one of these light bulbs, 
on the right hand side here. What it will do, it will leave that one on or turn it on and turn all of the others off. So if I select just these six millimeter drill holes by a right click, it will just show all of these six millimeter drill holes. Okay, so that's one way to import. You can also do exactly the same thing by right clicking on vectors and selecting import and it brings up the same dialog box. Okay, so if I delete all of these and let's import, let's say a EPS file. So this is an EPS file, select open. And that does that a little bit different. It just opens it. It doesn't give me an option, okay? So it doesn't give me any options whether I want to join these up or center them in the model. So it would just open it. Let's go to import again. And this time let's do a PDF. Now this actually is giving me a preview because I've got a PDF viewer on my system. So if I select open, then that does exactly the same thing. It will just open it up and not give me the dialog box to rejoin and to also center in the model. It just opens that up. And these can also be done by right clicking on vectors and selecting import. Now another way that you can do this is to just drag and drop it into the model space. So if I make this a bit smaller, you can see that I've got my three files here. So what I can do is, let's say the mounting, just drag and drop it and it will automatically open that up. Do the same with the PDF, drag and drop it and it will open that up. Let's see what the DXF file does. Drag and drop it, automatically gives me that dialog box, select OK, and it automatically opens it up. Now you may be wondering, let's say, especially for this DXF file, that the model size is really, really small, and the actual DXF file is really large, and it's going to be a headache to get that to actually fit that model. Now what you can do, is you can actually import it so it imports at the right size. So it creates a model around the actual size of the DXF file. So the way to do that is rather than creating a model first of all, so the way that I've done this, I've created a model that's 800 by 800, and then I've imported the DXF into that model. The way that I can do that is if I go to file, and then open. So I'll just open the DXF rather than importing it into a model. So if I go to file and open, select that DXF and select open. I'm not going to save my changes. And this will open up a completely new model for me. So now this is actually giving me a width of the extremities and the height of the extremities of this DXF file. So if I were to select OK for that, it gives me the exact same dialog box. I'll select OK, and that places that in the center. I'm in the 3D view at the moment. Just switch to the 2D view if you wish, and it also maintains all of those layers. So that's how you import various vector types into Carve Co Maker.